gazing stock. And it shall come to pass that all they who look upon you shall flee from you and say, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will be bemoan her? Whence shall I seek comforters for you? This is God speaking to the city of Nineveh because of their unrepentance, because of their idolatry, because of their sin. We need to behold what God is saying to this city today. And I want to use for a subject a simple subject. Your sins have made you my enemy. Your sins have made you my enemy. Anytime we continue in a or continue down a path that is contrary to the ways of God, we make God our enemy. Sin causes God to become your enemy. It's one thing if I'm your enemy. It's another whole realm altogether if God is your enemy. Your sins have made you my enemy. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're just thankful. We're expectant for what you are about to do this day. And we ask, Father, that you will speak to us individually and collectively, that you will move on our souls. Help us, Lord, that we will rejoice in our times of need, that we will shout when adversity comes our way, and that we will draw great comfort and strength uh, down our paths of life that seem at times to be monumental or to be filled with all types of woe and uncertainty because our God who saved us will bring us through. We thank you, Father, for your grace and mercy and anoint our ears and heart to hear what the Spirit is saying and anoint my lips of clay that I may boldly preach and proclaim your truth. And we give you forever the praise and the honor and the glory, knowing that if you are for us, who shall be against us? And it's in the mighty and the holy name of Jesus Christ we ask, and the whole church said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. I am just, I, I, I'm, I'm more and more thankful as every day goes past that I'm safe. If I ever have taken my being saved for granted. All I can say is, God, forgive me. This, hands down, is the best life there is. There is no life to compare that can compare to the life of a born-again, blood-bought, blood-washed child of God. We have the best of everything. We have access, somebody shout access. We have access to everything that heaven has. And the beauty of it is that God wants to bless us with it. He said that I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, ye may be also. He says that greater works than these shall you do because I go unto my Father. And he said, but I won't leave you comfortless. I will send a comforter that will help you. And in the Greek, the word comforter means paraclete, one call alongside to help. The Holy Spirit wants to help you in the morning, help you at noontime, and help you late at night. The Holy Spirit wants to shout with you when everything is going down. Good. He wants to shout with you when all hell and broke loose. Can somebody say praise the, Lord? praise the Lord? For had not it been for the grace and mercy of God. See, I'm talking about living the life of a child of God. Somebody that is born again. Somebody that is not afraid to get off into a, a foxhole and shoot it out with the devil and let him know that you may wound me, you may knock me down, but I'm not staying. I'm getting back up by the help and the grace, grace and mercy, uh, mercy of Almighty God. All of a sudden, grace runs across my head. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm thanking my Gracie Allen. Glory. I don't, hallelujah. Praise God. But this life of being a child of God, there's nothing like it. I wouldn't trade this for all the billions or the trillions of dollars that are in this world. I wouldn't trade it for all the gold in Fort Knox. I wouldn't trade it for all of the investments that are available on the New York Stock Exchange. I wouldn't trade this. You see, because when I've been down, God has stayed with me. When I've messed up, God has still walked with me. When I have got things wrong, he still said that you are my child and you will make it by my mercy and my grace. God has stayed by my side. There is no greater life than this. When I've been ridiculed, when I have been ostracized, 
Praise God. Amen. Many get into this wanting to be rich. Well, I'm here to tell you, brother, I am rich, and so are you, in Jesus Christ. I have access to everything that I need. It flows, it comes through the cross of Calvary. When I'm sick, he's my healer. When I'm tired, he's my picker-upper. When I need a friend, he's my friend. When I need strength, he's my strength. When I need joy, he gives me joy. When I need direction, he gives me direction. When I need somebody to comfort my soul, God comes in and lays beside me and comforts my soul. There is no God like my God. Hallelujah. I've been saved now almost 37 years. And brother, it has never got old or got cold. I still got the same fire running through my bones that God, when he came into my heart and came into my life and saved my soul, the fire still burns down inside of me. The fire of the Lord. And if we ever find ourselves getting cold or becoming un, becoming detached from the things of God, then brother, it's time for us to get back to the altar. Don't think it's strange when the devil comes in and climbs all up and down your back and wrecks havoc in your life. Don't think it's strange. Because when you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, a big red bullseye was drawn on you. And the devil got the bows that he's shooting at you. But every arrow that he shoots at you, God intends it for greatness. God wants us to get back on our knees and call on his name one more time. God wants us to get busy telling somebody about how good he is. God wants us to shout. Somebody shout. Hallelujah. God wants us to tell everybody about how good he is and what he can do if we would dare believe him. God wants us to, to become emotional in Jesus Christ and unemotional in the things of the world. Who cares if the Minnesota Jaguars wins the Super Bowl? Who cares if the Tennessee Titans win their division championship? Who cares if Michael Jordan comes out of retirement? Who cares? It doesn't matter at all. The only thing that matters is that Jesus Christ is still on the throne of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, there's no God as big as mine. He'll take every problem. You just can't. Solve. It makes no difference what the devil tries. I said there's no God as big as mine. Oh, glory to God. Those are fighting words right there. That's high noon right there. That's slapping leather right there. That's standing at one end of the street and you at the other end of the street and say draw. Amen. That's a confrontation right there. When you say there's no God as big as mine. And God wants to do great things in our heart and life. And we limit God because God to us is, 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 is Santa Claus. He's the one we go to when we, we need something. When we, we hurt him, we want a blessing. We, we, see, that's how we limit God. But God is a whole lot bigger than that. God is a, a breath. 